Presidential candidate Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard is one of just eight Democrats left in the primary, and the Congresswoman joins us tonight. Thanks for being with us. Good to see you. Good Thanks to have you here in Massachusetts. Absolutely. First two contests are down. Yes. Iowa, New Hampshire. You're walking out with zero delegates. Have you considered exiting the race at any point? No. We're taking our message on to voters. I think it's important to remember that there are still 48 states that have yet to uh, have their voters make sure their voices are heard. Uh, what to speak of the other territories. So we're, we're continuing to carry our message. I came from South Carolina earlier today, uh, here tonight, headed to Maine tomorrow, and making sure that voters have the opportunity to really have a choice and to make that uh, an informed one. When you were talking to your supporters the other night in New Hampshire, you said they tried to erase us, but we yeah. stay strong. Who are they, and what do you mean by they're trying there, to erase This us? is one of the challenges that we've had is that the, the national corporate media has largely censored my campaign almost from the day that it began. And it's, it's a very blatant thing when you look at uh, Pete Buttigieg, for example. He's had 11 nationally televised town halls. Uh, I've had one. Hmm. No other candidate has only had a single uh, national town hall. So there, there's, you can look at the different coverage and, and just there's a lot of different things that have created pretty powerful obstacles from me being able to have the platform. You weren't in the last Democratic debate, but there was a question that was asked of the candidates. They were asked, raise your hands if you're uncomfortable with the self-described Democratic Socialist leading the ticket. That, of course, refers to Bernie Sanders. Only Amy Klobuchar raised her hand, said she's uncomfortable with that. Are you comfortable with Democratic Socialists? As I agree with, with some things that, uh, that Bernie stands for. I disagree with other things. I think I've got a better approach to solve some of the problems that we're facing. Uh, ultimately, it's about every one of us as candidates being able to present our solutions, the kind of leadership that we'd bring to this country that would do two very important things. Fulfill the most important responsibility the president has as commander-in-chief of our armed forces. And number two, be able to work with Congress, work across party lines to actually be able to get stuff done. I've got experience in both of those areas that I can offer to the American people. Well, you, and you are a combat veteran. So yes. when you look at the agreement that has been made today between the United States and the Taliban, which may result in the withdrawal of some U.S. troops from Afghanistan, I know that you have largely put on your platform, put out there that you want us out of those wars overseas. Do you, do you like this agreement? Do you feel that the negotiations with the Taliban have been what they should be, or would you do things differently? Uh, let me say first that uh, you know I've, I've served as a soldier now for almost 17 years. Uh, I've deployed twice to the Middle East. There are threats to our national security that I, as Commander-in-Chief, would continue to make sure our military is focused on, threats coming from terrorist groups like ISIS and al-Qaeda. Uh, however, we need to stop waging these wasteful regime change wars, uh, this new Cold War nuclear arms race, all of which are not making us any safer. So yes, I've been a strong advocate for years to get our troops out of Afghanistan. And uh, it, what we are seeing happening now with this potential agreement is something that should have happened a long time ago. Something that it, a lot of people don't realize that we are still spending $4 billion a month in Afghanistan right now, a month. That's five and a half million dollars per hour. And for what? And this is the question a lot of voters are asking. What is this for? It's going to line the pockets of, of corrupt politicians in Afghanistan, of expensive consultants in Washington, but how is it actually uh, serving our country's national security interests? It's not. We've got to get our troops out of Afghanistan, redirect those taxpayer dollars towards actually serving the needs of the people in our communities right here at home. Let me go through basically our version of the lightning round here on the okay. WBZ News <laughs> All right. at 10 o'clock in case people here in Massachusetts aren't uh, specifically familiar with some of your thoughts on some of the big topics that sure. are making their way through the debates. Um, I'm going to give you the topic. You give me a quick answer. All right. Whether or not you believe in them, Medicare for all. My plan is a single payer plus plan. It would guarantee quality, affordable health care for every American while still maintaining people's freedom to choose if they want to keep their employer-sponsored uh, insurance, union-sponsored okay. insurance, they'd have the opportunity to make the best choice for themselves and their families. It's nice answering Medicare questions in 20 seconds. Right, that was easy? really good. That's, that's not always easy to do. <laughs> Universal background checks for gun purchases. Yes. Okay. Ban on assault weapons. Yes. President Trump's border wall. 
border security is important. His wall from sea to shining sea doesn't make sense from an effective perspective, nor does it make fiscal sense for taxpayers. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. For being with Thanks us. for your really time. Great to it. talk nice to, to you. See you. Congresswoman, great job. Thank you.